So our next uh, speakers are going to speak about uh, an undergraduate research program that we're developing that we're going to pilot in the coming year. Um, welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Um, this group is here to talk to you very quickly and very briefly about some of the work that we've been doing. We're here to talk to you about Spiral, student partners for information research and literacy. This is a brand new year-long undergraduate research program that the Institute is going to pilot um, next year. So Spiral is the Institute's effort to build a community, to continue to build this community that's forming, right? Where we're investigating information challenges and the role that information literacy can play in addressing some of these challenges that we've been hearing about throughout the symposium. And this is our effort, right, to really include students in this conversation. So we are gonna tell you a little bit, and by we, I mean these four people, um, who make up the design team, the people who've been building this program. Uh, my name is Rachel Fundator. I am a clinical assistant professor in the libraries. I'm Samantha Legrand, also a clinical assistant professor in the libraries. I'm Secret Pimenter. I'm a graduate student in history and the graduate assistant to Clarence Maybe. Uh, and I'm Ben Weiss. I'm an undergraduate student in the College of Mechanical Engineering. Okay, so we've been hearing over the course of the symposium, right, that our traditional notions, our traditional approaches to information literacy, how we work with students in the classroom, it's just not going to cut it in today's information environment. It's not going to help prepare people for navigating the challenges we're seeing, right, where, as we were just hearing from our presenters, right, um, information is coming to people. It's fueled by algorithms, right, and that information includes mis, dis, malinformation. People are trying to make effective decisions in this context. So information literacy scholars are really encouraging us to rethink how we are doing information literacy instruction and to be broader in nature, to think about how information systems interface with other systems, be it political, social. So we really want to be thinking about how information works and how we sort of work within these systems. One notable information literacy scholar that we've been looking to and who was mentioned yesterday is Barbara Pfister. She encourages us to think about you know, making information literacy relevant to our students by reframing it to be education for democracy, preparing people for what it is they're going to do in the real world. And one of the sort of tactics we can do is to have students ask questions and engage in systematic inquiry, right? Where they're asking questions about their information environment and they're seeking answers to those questions. And by doing this, we're not engaging in an academic exercise, right? That's only valuable within the context of a classroom, but it's something that they're going to practice, right? Beyond the classroom. And this is really at the heart of what we're trying to do with Spiral, where we want students to ask questions about their information environment and to reflect on their relationship with information systems that they might not have ever really thought about before and to sort of formally recognize or analyze the connection between information literacy and democracy. Okay, I'm gonna pass things over, pass things over to Samantha. Yes, so the, uh, the guiding values and principles of the spiral team really center around this idea of sort of reframing or rethinking information literacy as a way to encourage uh, and empower democratic participation. Um, and we're sort of approaching this in the program in two main ways. And the first of those two ways is by taking a students as partners approach both in the development and the execution of the program. Um, and so when we, when we think about students as partners, uh, a central aspect of that is coming to it with asset-mindedness. So how are we actively um, recognizing and building upon unique student strengths and perspectives, um, both as learners in this current information environment, but also um, what are those perspectives that they have on on the information environment as human beings and, and not just as uh, solely as students. Um, 
this partnering in this way allows us to um, really have more of an equitable partnership, and it allows us to um, build on the, the strengths that each person brings uh, in a meaningful way for them. Um, and that means that we share responsibility and we share decision-making power. Um, so when we decide to move forward or to do something, we do it together. Um, the more, I think, we operate on this belief that the more that we can integrate student partnership into the creation of our learning environments and also into our understanding of these information systems, um, the more information literacy that and the work that the students are doing academically becomes relevant to the rest of their lives outside of the classroom. The, the second core way that we are developing and thinking about the program um, to bring in this sort of democratic lens is through participatory research, an approach that uh, really operates on the idea that we should be doing research with groups of people and not on or for groups of people. Um, and this approach, this desire, came out of uh, conversations that we were having with our student partners and with other Purdue students that really just clarified, you know, crystal clear, students want to do work that is meaningful um, and that impacts and benefits the people around them. Um, and so we want to ensure that the, the research that we do in the lab uh, can enable students to do that. Um, when we sort of reframe our thinking about research in this way, it leads us to enact more socially just and culturally responsive research practices. Um, and that allows us to sort of begin to bridge the gap and the lack of trust that can sometimes exist between academic information creation processes and the communities that they're intended to serve. Um, so we see these values and principles as sort of formulating a pathway to allow students to do research that has meaningful impacts on the, the communities that they are interacting with. And now we have secret, Ben, Ben to tell us. Well, to effectively teach students as partners ideals, um, as well as information literacy, it was very important for us to be able to discuss it with undergraduate students. Having Secret as a graduate student and myself as an undergraduate one, those are great individual perspectives, but being able to communicate with a larger population was very important for what we're doing. So we accomplished that through two focus groups and one survey distributed to over 100 participants, and doing so allowed us to not only find students' perspectives, but commonalities among them, as well as other reasons students might have for participating in said survey and focus group or being at Purdue. Um, examples might include uh, majors they're studying, as well as experience in research. And it was finding things like that that really will help us um, create the pilot program to reflect what students need where they're beginning to understand research and information literacy and how we can accelerate that while also ensuring that they remain as partners in that endeavor. Um, the, these surveys and focus groups don't matter if we're not going to put what we learn to action. So these are just a few ways in which we're going to do, um, use what we've learned um, in our programs. But emphasizing the relevance of information literacy across multiple contexts, our central goal is to guide students' development of information literacy for de democra democratic engagement. The curriculum that we are going to be developing for our, our researchers will include a variety of activities that allow them to engage in practical, real-world information literacy practices, while also applying these practices towards an original research project of practical scholarly outputs. Through reflective practice, we will promote a participatory attitude towards research, which will build our upon the development of critical, reflective information and research mindset. This being said, we know that students want to be involved in the decision-making process, but do not want to be the primary decision-makers. Spiral will provide them both opportunities with pre-made decisions informed by students as partners and unmade decisions that students will be heavily involved in informing and deciding. In establishing and fostering peer mentorship opportunities, we will uh, go against the traditional student mentor partnerships in which mentors take the primary role um, in, in decision making processes. Um, 
we desired to break this and practice shared responsibility and decision making between students and mentor. Recognizing that individuals bring strengths, prior experiences, and interests to team projects. Um, that being said, part of the reason that Ben and I are so involved in this project is because of our individual um, aspects that we bring to the table. So prior to this experience, um, I was at least not as aware of information literacy as I see it now. Um, being a mechanical engineer, a lot of my perspective was based on statistical data and physical coefficients, but being involved in the research that we're pursuing now, um, it's very much changed my idea of the power of information, misinformation that is, and also how consistent it is in a daily life. For example, social media is a huge aspect. Being able to be a partner in this project has also absolutely increased my confidence and ability to provide a difference, which is, again, what we saw a lot of students desire. So knowing these things, being able to implement them into the pilot is something I really hope to accomplish, such that other students participating in it will feel the same and therefore create the best kind of learning environment that they can. Um, being a graduate student means that I am uniquely in a position where I have been through the research process as an undergraduate, but I'm now removed from it. Um, as an undergraduate, I got to see two sides of the research coin because I was in political science and history. I got to see the isolation side of research and the collaboration side of research. My experiences within both of these fields will it will inform how we make a meaningful research experience with our student researchers, creating a balance between these two sides, with many opportunities for these students to work collaboratively and giving them a voice in the work that they do and allowing them to do more independent work. My current experience as a graduate student gives me this additional layer of insight that I am able to reflect on my experiences from a distance and am in an environment that regularly tests the information literacy and research training I received during my undergraduate career. I have seen the long-term impacts that these experiences can have, both inside and outside the, ac the academy firsthand, and this perspective can inform us to make meaningful experiences for our researchers with long-lasting real-world implications. Okay, so the obvious question, what next? What are we doing? <laughs> um, so this group has been working on building this curriculum um, since about November, and we are in, still in the process. So we are gonna continue to work together, to partner together over the summer. We are building the program, and as Secret mentioned, right, there are certain features of what we will be doing with students. It's gonna involve reflexive practice, right? So they're kind of thinking about their learning as they're learning it, um, and our research Research is going to turn into action. It's not just going to be about the development of knowledge, but how does that translate into something? Um, they will have the opportunity to disseminate, a, a, you know, an artifact, present, um, and each of our students kind of, you know, they have their own lives, they have their own interests. So we think that running, uh, you know, through this program will be lots of opportunities for students to develop as individuals according to their interests. So we're going to kind of curate a list of, um, you know, all of the great things that happen across Purdue for students to, to take advantage of. Uh, this is a pilot offering, which we've mentioned several times, so it's going to be smaller in scale. We're imagining three to four students will um, be engaged in this sort of team-based uh, research that they'll be working on. Uh, there will be three institute mentors, three that are in this room. Um, and our focus is, you know, as Secret was saying, you know, we have to provide some sort of uh, guardrails, some boundaries for this first year. Uh, based on what we're hearing, what we're reading, and a through line through everything that's been talked about through this symposium, our focus is really going to be on the connection, right, and students' perceptions of the connection between democracy um, and algorithmic uh, technologies, right? How do they perceive these sort of their use and their engagement with these technologies as empowering or disempowering, and how do they talk with other students about this? Yes, and finally, as we, we go forward, you know, this has been a learning experience for all of us as we figure out what it looks like to work as partners. Um, but we know that, that 
equitable partnership is something that we are committed to through the duration. Um, and I think that as we are taking this lens on infra, you know, education for democracy, we want to walk the talk, as they say, you know, and, and to us that looks like everyone gets to have a say in what happens in, and not just the, the uh, professionals, you know, but the students as well. And so um, our hope for that in a couple of ways is to uh, use the work that the students are doing every year to support the students who are coming after um, examples and, uh, you know, guidelines. And, and a big part of that is going to be we hope to have peer mentors. So after a student goes through the program for one year, we hope that they will uh, stay on for another year to act as guides um, and, and co-teachers and learners with the students who are coming in after. So just to go off that note, of course, Spiral is always looking to expand and in involve more students, and particularly um, being educated on democracy, information literacy, and ways to engage in research. The QR code here is a link to our website, so you can see what we're up to, um, and additionally, ways to contact us. And we'll now be taking any questions. Um, thank you. That was, that was wonderful. Uh, it's wonderful to hear about the Spiral Project. So yeah, we have time for maybe one or two questions. Does anyone have any, or uh, is there any online questions? Yeah. Online question from Dan. Uh, I'm curious about the relationship differences between partners and mentors. How do you think of these roles as part of the program? I knew Dan would have a question about the students as partners <laughs> things because he, he actually just was awarded a grant for his um, student pedagogy advocates. Um, so that's a really good question. I think it kind of comes down to this sort of, and I also want everyone else to be able to answer this, this um, sort of balance, right? So partnership, right, is about sort of finding the right ways or kind of our, our own expertise, what it is that we can bring to the partnership, right? It doesn't have to be exactly the same, but it has to be equitable and mutually decided upon. And I think that with mentorship, right, there is going to be, um, you know, maybe a little bit more guidance. I don't see them as completely separate from one another though, but I think that as a mentor role, you're also trying to help, you know, provide a little bit more, um, uh, sort of guidance and sharing your own previous experience, but I'd like to hear from others. This is how our meetings go. Does anybody have thoughts? Uh, give me a second. <laughs> um, I, I can't remember the exact question. Was it the relationship between the difference? I was thinking more along the lines of similarity <laughs> between, um, but in that, you know, uh, Again, identifying strengths. Um, there's probably things that Ben could mentor me in very effectively, um, uh, and vice versa, right? So again, like Rachel was saying, it's I think it's really just about you know partnership is it's it, they kind of go together. I think like you you know your partner can also be your mentor too, and I think it's kind of you know your parallel lines of you know how you are working together as partners. And that means identifying who has, you know, expertise in, in one area and could be a mentor for the other. Um, so I think I think they do go together. I have one more thing to add. I think that also mentorship mentorship is sort of predicated on this idea that you're welcoming people into sort of a community, right? We think about research mentors, right? Helping students recognize how does research work. And so I think that there's there's that element. Maybe this is a situation in which a little bit more guidance is, is possibly needed, right? If students haven't engaged in research before. Um, but I, I agree with Sam that I think that they're, they're related to one another. Okay, we have time for one more question. Um, hi, thank you for sharing sharing this uh, super exciting project. Um, I was curious about whether you found any asymmetry among the students that you're working with between the two ends of it. So democracy is a very traditional political science, political philosophy idea. There's a whole, you know, is it thick, thin, procedural, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then there's algorithms and algorithms and how they're working and artificial intelligence and it I, I see students' eyes light up when I talk about algorithms. I see them 
glaze over when, when you're talking about democracy? Do you find uh, an asymmetry there in terms of interests, and how do you, how do you tackle it? Just Okay, yes, I'm up. I think that's a really interesting question. I think though that like if we talk about, you know, we get into like the weeds about democracy, that's where people might say, okay, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to go there. But I think that this idea, like democracy premised on this idea of, you know, being informed and being engaged is something that is exciting. And this idea of, you know, um, students from the literature also, they really care about social issues and they care about being part of addressing social issues. So I think that that's kind of the connection. I think that they experience algorithms, right? We all experience them every day, but I think that they experience them perhaps more so um, than some other people in, in, in this room, right? And I think that, um, you know, I think that there's a nice tie in there. But your question has made me think a lot, though, about sort of <laughs> how might students think about, I mean, we have a lot of students at Purdue, right, who care about democracy, right? The, um, you know, with like uh, student government and in CLA. So I think, that, I think that there are people who might be really good people to partner with to kind of help bring all students along. Yeah, um, yeah I would just add on to that by saying um, I mean, like in an interesting way, if you think about it, like I would kind of view democracy as like the human algorithm, if you will, in the sense that, I mean, you know, an algorithm acts to take in as much information as it can and create the correct string of data. Um, and theoretically, a democracy should work the same way, given everyone has input to a solution. Um, so, so in that sense, I would kind of argue there are more similarities than differences. Um, and also, in kind of another lens, just the, the newness of algorithms, or at least the excitement of it, has definitely caused a lot of discussion, um, which I would, again, argue is a form of democracy. So in more ways than one, I think there's a lot of similarities emerging. All right, thank you. Um, <laughs> so if you have more questions for the, the spiral, uh, I call them the spiral gang. but. Um, please feel free to come up to one of them during the break and ask your questions. And, put a play. and also at 4 p.m. we have this art exhibition and we will be here so you can talk to us at, at that point as well. <laughs>